In this video, we will look at how transportation affects the world around us, our quality of life, the environment we live in, and the economic prosperity. The current COVID-19 pandemic is a real-life example on how transportation affected the environment. The chart you see depicts the trend in air quality in Kuala Lumpur, measured in AQI, the Air Quality Index. Air Quality Index, or AQI, is a method used to describe the amount of pollution in the air that we breathe. The lower the AQI, the better the quality of the air as there are lesser amount of pollutants in the air. From the chart, the AQI has a 15-day average of 57.8 points prior to the enforcement of a nationwide movement control order, MCO, by the Government of Malaysia on March 18, 2020. After the enforcement of the MCO, the AQI recorded a lower 15-day average of 54.4 points for the period between 18th March and 31st March of 2020. Statistically, the difference in average AQI for pre- and post-MCO is significant at 95% confidence level. What does these statistics tell us? During the MCO, people are forced to stay at home and no commuting trips took place due to the movement control order. As traveling grinds to a halt, the amount of pollutant released from burning the carbon fuel in the car engine also reduces significantly. This is clearly reflected in the lower average AQI value after 18th March 2020. Now, for the skeptics, the statistics and the chart reinforce the current knowledge that transportation is a major contributor to the degradation of the environment, specifically through air and noise pollutions. To understand how transportation affects environmental quality, the livability of the population and economic growth, it is important to have a clear understanding on the different components of transportation and how transportation works to connect people and places. It all starts in the neighborhood where people live and call home. To sustain their livelihood, the population needs to earn money either through commerce or through employment. And to be employed and to do business, either small or big, they must get an education. These basic living needs, i.e. income and education, cannot be met entirely within one's home. In fact, most probably, the population needs to travel from their home, the origin, to some other location, the destination, to earn money or to be educated. These physical movements where one moves from the origin to the destination and back are called trips. The origin-destination pair, or simply referred to as OD, is the first element of transportation. The understanding of these needs to physically move from the origin to the destination to achieve some benefits, either employment, commerce, education, health, tourism, visiting friends and relatives, or to obtain goods and services, are the basic premise for transportation demand. Now, to physically move safely and comfortably from one's origin to one's intended destination, to obtain some benefits at the destination, requires that a formal route be defined. This formal route that connects the origin to the destination is called a transportation way or simply way. The way can be as primitive as a walking pathway to as complex as an expressway or a railway track. The combination of various ways, walkways, cycling ways, roadways, expressways, railways, creates the transportation network systems within a neighborhood, city, state, region, and nation. Just providing the ways are not enough to support the mobility needs of the population in a timely manner. In transportation, 
the value of travel time has great significance in determining locational choice as well as choice of travel mode. Apart from these choices, travel time also affects productivity and cost. The longer the travel time, the more time one spends in the vehicle without any productivity gains and increases the financial cost of the trips. To facilitate timely movement, especially over longer travel distance between the origin and the destinations, the population depends on vehicles as their carriage. The use of carriage significantly reduces travel time, yet increases cost of traveling. Different types of carriages have different travel time and cost characteristics. For example, driving is significantly faster than cycling and cycling is significantly faster than walking. But walking is cheaper than cycling and cycling is less costly than driving. Hence, depending on one's needs and the combination of travel distance and monetary value of time, one type of carriage will be superior to others and this type will be selected as the transportation mode of choice. Having the carriage alone will not physically move an individual from the origin to his or her intended destination. The carriage invariably needs power to provide the energy to propel itself along the transportation way. Without this energy, Motive power is absent and the carriage will not move and will remain static at the origin. It follows that the energy can only be harnessed through a complex conversion process, a process that converts input sources into output in the form of motive power, the power that moves the carriage. Unfortunately, Currently, there is no conversion process that is truly efficient which can convert 100% of the input source fully into energy with zero waste. This inefficiency of the conversion process means that there will be some form of waste that will produce as the co-products or by-products of the conversion process. Even when we choose to walk or cycle, energy is still required that acts as the motive power for our body. For walking and cycling, the conversion process to obtain the energy that provides the motive power required to walk and cycle happens entirely within our body. The input source for this conversion process will be the foods that one consumes and the complex chemical process that transforms and converts our food sources into energy takes place in our digestive system. This conversion process in our body within the digestive system is called metabolism. Through this metabolism process, our body obtains the energy to allow us to go about doing our daily physical activities including mobility. As complex and as natural the metabolism process is, the metabolism process is still not an efficient process as not all the foods that we consume can be converted fully into usable energy. In our body, the co-products or the by-products from the metabolism process are the digestive waste that needs to be removed out from our body periodically. Even when we choose to drive, ride a motorcycle, or take a public transportation, the vehicle too, just like our body, needs energy to provide the motive power required to propel the vehicle into motion. For motorized vehicles, the conversion process to get the energy for motive power happens inside the vehicle's engine. Like our body, the conversion process in motorized vehicles requires input sources, which normally 
is in the form of carbon fuel like petrol and diesel. However, if the conversion process in our body is called metabolism, the conversion process in the engine of motorized vehicles is called combustion. During the combustion process in the engine, carbon fuel is burned internally to create energy for motive power. For that reason, the engine of the motor vehicle is termed as internal combustion engine or ICE. Similar to our body, the ICE is not an efficient engine as carbon fuel is not converted entirely into motive power. The core products of the combustion process include heat and exhaust fume that contains pollutants like carbon monoxide, CO, sulfur dioxide, SO2, and nitrogen dioxide, NO2, which are released into the environment. These pollutants are the culprits behind environmental phenomena like global warming, acid rains, haze, and many others. Hence, to have the ease of movement, we had inadvertently created environmental problems. To put everything together, here are the four elements of transportation. The origin and destination pair, the way, the unit of carriage, and the motive of power. The understanding of these four elements of transportation is crucial to understand how transportation affects the sustainability of the environment, the economy, and the society. Only when we comprehend these elements, we can dictate plans to improve the environmental quality, the economic prosperity, and the quality of life of the society. Now, let us look at how the four elements of transportation impacted sustainability. First, the origin. How we plan our neighborhood, the origin, which is the starting point of trips, will define the density of the development. If the density is low, the population will tend to be highly dependent on motorized vehicles for their travel mode as low density development is not favorable to providing public transportation services. Neighborhood with inadequate public transportation services will be disadvantageous to the lower income group that could not afford the high cost of vehicle ownership. Next is the destination. If the destination of employment is far from the origin, the population will spend a significant proportion of their income on paying for transportation. Also, the traveling time will be significantly longer, resulting in the population to spend longer time on the road in their vehicles. And as the vehicles are on the road for longer period, more fuel will be burned, which releases higher volume of pollutants into the atmosphere. Also, if the destination is further away from the neighborhood, active mobility like walking and cycling that are friendlier to the environment will become impractical. Employment opportunities located further from home will also encourage mass migration into the city center. The second element, the way, also greatly impacted sustainability. To build a road or railway, huge parcels of green spaces will need to be cleared for their constructions. These constructions will drive native wildlife away from their natural habitat and deplete the natural food sources of these wild animals. Replacing the green spaces with pavements also induces flooding as the surfaces become impervious to run off water. Additionally, the constructions of roadways and railways reduces the amount of fertile land available for farming and agriculture, creating a society that is susceptible to food insecurity. 
The construction of the ways makes ownership of private vehicles, i.e. the carriages, the third transportation element, becomes attractive. As we have seen earlier, the carriages and their need for energy to supply the required motive power, the fourth element, to propel the vehicles releases harmful pollutants into the atmosphere. These pollutants, the core product of an incomplete combustion process, are the result of an inefficient internal combustion engine or ICE. These harmful pollutants ultimately bring about many environmental and health issues to the population. As a final note, the question that we need to answer urgently now is how do we make transportation more sustainable? Thank you.